Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on my post notifications. That way you guys get notified every single time I upload a video. In today's video, we are going to go into chapter 39 of As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 39. They didn't talk much during the drive, didn't know what to say, what they were allowed to say, or even how much to move. Kara sat in the passenger seat, her hands tucked in between her legs, shoulders arched and stiff, taking up as little space as she could. Naomi was in the back, sitting up too straight, her back not even touching the seat. Pip glanced in the rearview mirror and saw... Streaks of headlights and street lights stripped over Naomi's face, bringing life back into her eyes. Pip concentrated on the road instead of the silence. She was on I-95 southbound, trying to hit as many traffic cameras as possible. This time, she wanted them to see her. That, the, that was the whole point. Airtight, ironclad. If it came out to the police, could follow the route Pip and her car had taken through the eyes of these cameras. Retrace her steps, prove she was right here and not somewhere else, killing a man. How Steph, Pip said when she, when the quiet in the car got a little too loud. She turned the radio on a while ago. It was too eerie, too aggressively normal. And what was the most unnormal drive the three of them could ever take? Um, Kara gave a small cough, watching out the window. Yeah, she's good. That was it. Silence again. Well, what had Pip expected involving them in this? Asking too much of them. Pip's eyes drew up, catching sight of McDonald's logo on the sign up ahead. <coughs> Her headlights lighting up the golden M until it glowed. It was in Darien Service Plaza. That's why she and Ravi. That's why her and Ravi had picked it. Cameras everywhere. Pip excited, exited the highway and pulled into the Service Plaza into the huge parking lot that was still heaving with people and cars, even though it had just passed ten. She rolled forward, waiting for a space near the front, right by the huge gray and white building pulled in turned off the car the silence was even louder now than the engine was now that the engine wasn't hiding it saved by a group of men clearly drunk squawking as they stumbled in front of the car and through the entrance of the doors into the well-lit building started early Kara said nodding to the group reaching out across the silence pip grabbed at it with both hands sounds like my kind of night out she said in bed by 11 my kind of night out too Cora said turning around a small smile on her face if it ends in fries pip laughed then a guttural hollow laugh that spit open into a cough she was so glad they were here with her even though she hated herself for having to ask i'm sorry for this she said staring forward at the other groups of people people on long trips away or long trips home or not very long trips either way people on family visits with small sleepy children or nights out or even nights and picking up food on the way normal people living their normal lives and then the three of them in this car don't be naomi spoke up now resting a hand on pip's shoulder you'd do it for us and naomi was right she would and she had she kept the secret of the hit and run naomi had been involved in pip had found another way to clear sal's name so car didn't lose her father and her sister at the same time but that didn't make her feel any better about what she <coughs> about what she asked of them now the kind of favor you hoped you would never need returning but hadn't pip realized yet everything was returning the full circle of dragging them all back around again exactly Kara said pressing her finger lightly on the badly covered graze of pip's cheekbone uh, as though touching it would tell her what happened the thing she'd never know for sure. We just want you to be okay. Just tell us what to do. Lead the way and tell us what to do. That's the thing, Pip said. We don't need to do anything, really. Just act normal. Happy, she sniffed. Like something bad hasn't happened. Our dad killed your boyfriend's older brother and kept a girl in his attic for five years, Car said quickly with a glance back at Naomi. You have yourself two experts on acting normal. At your service, Naomi added. Thank you, Pip said, knowing deep down her inadequate how inadequate those two words were let's go pip opened the door and stepped out taking the backpack that Kara was handing across to her she shouldered it and looked around there was a tall street light behind her lighting up the parking lot with an industrial yellow glow halfway up the pole pip could see two dark 
cameras one pointed their way pip made sure to look up study the stars for a second so the camera could capture her face a million million lights in the gaping blackness of the sky okay naomi said shutting the door the back door and gathering her cardigan around herself pip walked the car and they walked together the three of them through the automatic doors into the service plaza it still had the buzz the same small energy all rest stops had the clash of those two heavy eyed and those two wired the near the nearly theirs and the just begun pip wouldn't wasn't either of them the end wasn't in sight yet this long night would be longer still, but she was past the middle of the plan, leaving the checked boxes behind her in the back of her mind, burying them deep down. She just had to keep going one foot in front of the other two hours until she had to meet Ravi. This way, she said, leading Kara and Naomi to, over to the McDonald's at the back end of the carnivorous building. The drunk men were already there at a table in the middle, still squawking but around mouthfuls of fries now. Pip picked a booth close to them, but not too close, dumping her bag down. On one chair, she opened it to pull out her wallet and then zipped it back up before Naomi and Kara saw anything they shouldn't sit, Pip said to them, smiling for the cameras that she shouldn't see, that she couldn't see but knew would be somewhere. Kara and Naomi slid themselves along the shiny plastic-covered booth and material screaming against their clothes. I'll get the food. What do you guys want to eat? The sisters looked at each other. Well, we already ate dinner at home, Kara said tentatively. Pip nodded. So just fries for you? Naomi, I don't think there's a vegetarian option, sorry. And chicken nuggets are for Kara, of course. Don't even need to ask for Cokes? They nodded. Okay, perfect. Be back in a sec. Pip strolled past the table of drunk men, wallet swinging from her hand up to the counter. There was a line. Three people in front of her. Pip stared ahead, clocking the security cameras posted on the ceiling behind the registers. She sidestepped a few inches so they had a good view of her. Waiting in line, she tried to act normal natural like she didn't know she was being watched and she couldn't help but wonder if that's that's what normal was for her now and act a lie pip stuttered when it was her turn at the front smiling at the car the cashier to cover the hesitation she didn't want to eat she just as much as Kara and Naomi did it, but it didn't matter what she wanted. This was all a show, a performance for the cameras, a believable narrative in the trace of sh traces she was leaving behind. Hi, she smiled, recovering. Can I please have two chicken nugget meals, w both with Cokes and a, and a large fry and of another Coke, please? Yep, sure, the cashier said, plugging something into the screen in front of her. Want any sauces with that? Um, Just ketchup, please. Sure, he said, scratching his head beneath his cap is that everything pip nodded trying not to glance up at the camera behind the cashier's head as he called the order to a colleague because she would be looking directly into the eyes of the detective who might be watching the footage in the weeks to come daring them not to believe her this time it would likely be hawkins wouldn't it jason was from fairview so his murder would probably be dealt with by fairview police department a new game with new players hers against detective hawkins and max hastings was her offering hello the cashier stared at her narrowing his eyes i said that comes to sixteen dollars forty seven cents sorry pip unzipped her wallet paying by card he asked yes she said almost too forcefully staring straying out of character for a moment of course she had to pay by card she had to leave an indisputable trace of her being at being here at the same time, she pulled out her debit card and taped it against the contactless card reader. Tapped it against the contactless card reader. It beeped and the cashier handed her her seat. She should keep that too, she thought, folding it neatly and tucking it inside her wallet. It'll just be a minute, the cashier said, gesturing for her, gesturing her aside so he could take the order of the man standing behind her. Pip stood off to the side, leaning against the backlit menu, still inside of the cameras. She arranged her face for Hawkins, slack and unthinking, but really she was thinking about him studying the position of her feet, the arch of her shoulders, and the look in her eyes. She tried not to fiddle too much as she waited, and Casey thought she looked nervous. She wasn't nervous. She was just here to eat some junk food with her friends. She glanced over to Kara and Naomi and gave them a small wave. See Hawkins just getting food with her, her friends. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I'm going to leave off right there. There will be a part two to this chapter, so come back for that.